The United Nations Security Council is going to be voting on which countries will join the UN Human Rights Council later this month. Some of the possibilities include Cuba, China, Russia, South Sudan, and Morocco. And there are a few of them that human rights organizations are concerned about. Joining us to talk a little bit more about this is Hillel Neuer, the executive director of UN Watch, coming to us from Montreal. All right, Hillel, you know, you talk about countries like Cuba and China, Russia, arguably. I mean, which countries are you most concerned about here who are possibly on this list? Well, you've mentioned some of them. We also have Saudi Arabia, which last week uh, arrested women for the crime of driving while being a woman. Uh, Sixty women bravely took to, uh, to b going behind the wheel and trying to drive a car where it's forbidden. Saudi Arabia is the worst country on the planet when it comes to women's rights, when it comes to freedom of religion, and they're likely to be elected as a world judge on human rights. And we think that for the United Nations to elect Saudi Arabia as a world judge on human rights is like making a pyromaniac into the town fire chief. It's absurd. It's outrageous. Right. And so people who are following this story are listening to us right now are thinking to themselves, well, uh, wait a minute, how does this happen exactly? Well, it's a good question. And the, the dream of the United Nations, founded by Eleanor Roosevelt, the Human Rights Commission was founded by Eleanor Roosevelt and French uh, legal philosopher René Cassin was to be a place that would speak out for human rights principles after World War II to reaffirm human dignity. The reality today is it's politicized and backroom dealing and vote trading is often what determines what happens at the United Nations. So sadly, the Human Rights Council, even though it was founded as an idealistic venture, is very much a product of this backroom politicization and that's why we're likely to see China, Cuba, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, Vietnam and Jordan elected as world judges on human rights, even though those governments effectively violate every article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Right. I mean, we're looking at some of these uh, laws passed recently, for example, in Russia, anti-gay laws. Uh, so what about the optics, though? I mean, does the United Nations, uh, you're talking about how backroom dealings are going on. Does the U.N. not realize what the optics are here about these kind of things when, when these countries well, get on this country, council? Some do. On rare occasions, we can get a U.N. official to speak out against it. In the end, it's United Nations member states that do the elections, what we're calling for. You know, UN Watch and Human Rights Foundation and a coalition of other human rights groups, we're also going to have members of parliament around the world signing our appeal, which we'll release at the United Nations on Monday. We're going to have world-famous dissidents, including uh, escaped Chinese activist Chen Guangcheng. We're going to have uh, Rosa Maria Paya from Cuba. We're going to have Ali Al Ahmed from Saudi Arabia, uh, brave champions of human rights, Masha Gessen from Russia, who's taken on Vladimir Putin, calling on the United States and the European Union, two leaders of democratic forces at the United Nations to speak out and say something. So far, these countries have said nothing about the election of some of the world's worst regimes to the Human Rights Council. So we're, we're seeing a lot of cowardice, I would say, from those forces that we expect to lead when it comes to achieving democratic progress for human rights at the United Nations. Let's be blunt. If some of these countries end up on this council, uh, China, Cuba, Russia, Saudi Arabia, does it make the council a joke? Uh, I think it does. Uh, let's bear in mind that the Council was created in 2006 to replace the discredited Human Rights Commission, which had elected in 2003, most notoriously, the Libyan regime of Colonel Gaddafi as their chair. So 1946, Eleanor Roosevelt, 2003, Gaddafi. It was regarded as a joke around the world. And after two years later, Secretary General Kofi Annan scrapped the commission and created the Human Rights Council. And today, what we're saying is the election of these repressive regimes threatens to drive the council down the same ignominious path of the old discredited commission and it's time to sound the alarm and that's what we're doing and we hope the United States and the European Union and Canada will speak out and try to fight back. We appreciate your time uh, today, Hillel. Thanks so much.